Salt makes our chips and popcorn taste yummy, but it turns out that's not all. It's used in household and industrial products, from cosmetics to fertilizers, from water treatment to road gridding. All over the globe, around 300 tons of salt are produced every year. But there's a problem. That's too much salt for our planet. You see, salt rises to Earth's surface from deep oceanic rocks gradually, and this process is quite balanced, or it used to be. Humans are pushing this balance out of whack. Our demand keeps increasing, and we're releasing too much salt into the soil, air, and sea. And if this process continues unchecked, we might face an existential threat. Yep, it's as serious as that, and a recent study conducted by the University of Maryland confirms this. There is this thing called the natural salt cycle. It's existed for thousands of years. Salt naturally rises to our planet's surface via geologic uplift and rock weathering. Sometime later, rocks break down and release salt ions into the soil. Some of these ions are absorbed by plants and organisms. Others are washed away into rivers, which transport them into oceans. Salt also gets into the atmosphere. It happens through salt dust in dry regions and sea spray in coastal areas. It's crucial for humans because our bodies need salt, just like animals and plants do. Simply put, we're electrical systems controlled by salt. Soil needs salt because otherwise it won't clump together. Plants also need small amounts of salt since those allow them to have proper metabolism and synthesize enough chlorophyll. At the same time, too much salt isn't a great thing. And nowadays, human activity is messing with the natural salt cycle, bringing salt to the planet's surface much more quickly than before. That's the conclusion researchers made after combining data from different sources, including the U.S. Geological Survey's Mineral Yearbook and Global Records of River Compositions and Salinity Measurements. The main factor bringing about these changes is salt mining for food and other products. Then there are also acid rains. Those increase the rate of rock weathering. These and other factors speed up the generation of salt at the surface of our planet. At the moment, the concentration of salt in the world is too high. The soil, plants, and animals can't use all of it. Even worse, some essential species can't survive with all this extra salt. Their demise changes biodiversity and can lead to the appearance of invasive species, such as phragmites. Those are tall, reedy plants taking over coastal areas. Then, there's also zooplankton, an important ocean species regulating algae. It's extremely sensitive to salt. If this species starts to decline, it might mess with the world's food webs. Too much salt also turns farmlands into wastelands. Recent reports have shown that around 833 hectares of land are already affected. And that's the area around four times the size of India. In some countries, huge areas become infertile because of oversalination. Plus, excess salt is bad for our health. The thing is, all that extra salt gets into groundwater, making it too salty for human consumption. It's particularly bad for people with sodium-restricted diets. And I'm not only talking about table salt or sodium chloride. No, other calcium and magnesium-based salts are seeping out too, usually from the production of fertilizers and building materials. It's like a chemical cocktail of different salts coming from various sources, and scientists don't know yet the effects such a cocktail can have on us humans and our health. So, maybe now you're sitting and thinking, oh, it's time to cut back on my salt intake. Perhaps, but don't cut it all out. In the 1930s, Dr. Robert McCants from Cambridge University's Department of Experimental Medicine found four volunteers and asked them to go 10 days completely without salt. First, they had to sweat out the salt that still remained in their bodies. And after that, the scientists literally desalinated everything they were allowed to eat and drink. Soon after, the participants started to experience weird sensations they realized that they didn't taste much flavor in anything they consumed. It got worse. Fatigue set in, and the volunteers soon got too tired to even eat. They began to show the signs of hyponatremia. It occurs when the concentration of sodium in your blood is dangerously low, 
and that's when a person's blood cells swell because there's not enough salt in the blood to regulate how much water a cell should and will consume. If this condition is left untreated, it can not only result in seizures, but also have much, much worse consequences. At the end of the trial period, participants got some salty foods, and miraculously, within a few minutes, they could taste again, and their energy seemed to be replenished almost immediately. Honestly, it sounds kind of terrifying. If that's what a mere 10 days without salt are, Imagine what catastrophe it would be if salt just ceased to exist. We wouldn't be able to last long, that's for sure. And it would be a never-ending drama, not only for us, but for plants and animals too. They need salt as much as we do. If our oceans suddenly lost all the salt, it would wipe out all underwater algae, cutting photosynthesis on Earth almost in half. Land-based plants would follow suit, so, soon after the disappearance of salt, we'd face a huge issue. Too much carbon dioxide and not nearly enough oxygen. Our climate would start fluctuating between extremely hot and cold temperatures, and hurricanes would become insanely powerful and super destructive. Luckily, we still have salt at our stores and the natural salt cycle might get more or less stable again. By the way, humanity has known of and appreciated salt for many centuries. For example, it was used as offerings and to preserve mummies in ancient Egypt. It was a valuable commodity traded between the Phoenicians and their Mediterranean empire. In ancient China, people knew of more than 40 types of salt and used it for medicinal purposes. In medieval continental Europe, Venice gained power through its salt monopoly. The production and transportation of salt led to the appearance of new cities and the construction of roads. Salzburg, the city of salt in Austria, is a great example of that. Even these days, salt continues to surprise us. For example, recently, researchers from the University of Miami Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science have discovered rare deep-sea brine pools in the Gulf of Aqaba. That's a northern extension of the Red Sea. Those salty underwater lakes are likely to hold secrets about the way oceans on Earth formed all those millions of years ago. They might also give us some clues to life on other planets. Brine pools are some of the most extreme environments on Earth. And still, despite their ultra-high salinity, somewhat exotic chemistry, and total lack of oxygen, they're teeming with life. Researchers have even found bioactive molecules with potential anti-cancer properties in brine pool microbes in the Red Sea. These super salty zero oxygen brine pools are located close to the coast and might preserve information on tsunamis, earthquakes and flash floods that took place in the Gulf of Aqaba thousands of years ago. Salt has even made its way into space. Well, kind of. You see, the moon is like a comet soaring through the cosmos. Our natural satellite is followed by a slender tail consisting of irradiated matter, and our planet passes directly through this tail once a month. Well, according to a study published in the journal JGR Planets, this lunar tail is made of millions of sodium atoms. And as you already know, the chemical formula of salt is sodium chloride. Those atoms get blasted out of the lunar soil by meteor strikes and then pushed thousands of miles downstream by solar radiation. For several days a month, when the new moon is located between Earth and the Sun, the gravity of our planet drags that sodium tail into a long beam which wraps around our planet's atmosphere. The tail itself is harmless and invisible to the unaided eye. But during those new moon days, high-powered telescopes can detect the faint orange glow of sodium in the sky. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.